Hey guys, Adam here with uh, Scuba Life 360. I got uh, my whole crew in here um, at CTV Beam. We're uh, interviewing each other, uh, just having a good old conversation about our latest dives. Um, we definitely uh, want to get this uh, out to the public. It's a great, um, fun sport to do. Um, and it's a dying sport. There's a lot of uh, older scuba divers that are passing away and we're trying to get reach out to the younger generations and even my son which is here on studio which you'll meet him in a little bit he's actually going for his first open water certification as well so let's start out um, Matt my good dive buddy he was one of my first students I actually instructed so Matt on the biggest memory from your very first time putting scuba equipment on, what do you take away from that? Uh, well, there's a lot of things I really took away from that, but I mean, really in all honesty, all of it was pretty awesome, Adam. Uh, uh, it's, it's just a different world when you're under the water, so I mean, uh, just getting to see things that nobody else has seen, uh, really it's just amazing. First time I got under water was pretty, pretty sweet. All right, next we got Tyler um, Blackman from uh, his YouTube channel is Tyler Smart. Um, I've been diving with Tyler for probably a year or so now, and um, we actually go out and clean up the Chattahoochee River. Um, Tyler just uh, listed a video on YouTube. Make sure you check his channel out. Tyler, on the biggest thing I know with the video we just shot um, with the warhead we found, um, what can you tell other people why we're cleaning up, getting the river clean, stuff like that? Yeah, so personally, um, the, the cleaning up the river and um, all those things, it, it really comes down to trying to spread a positive image, really. Um, there's a lot of people who, you know, chuck trash into the river and stuff like that. So along with the cool finds that we do find and, you know, the things that we're able to find and then return to the owners, um, I just feel like picking up the trash that other people just throw in, it's a huge positive impact and I just want to send a positive message. All right, on to our other buddy Matt. We got <laughs> two Matts in our crew. Um, he, his YouTube channel is actually Dive and Seek. So Matt, um, again, I know <laughs> you're a new diver, mm -hmm. um, like uh, with Matt here. Um, what is the best for you diving? How does it make you feel? It takes me a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, I'm a strong swimmer, but I'm not the best breath holder. So being able to be in that kind of environment without actually having to worry about holding my breath changes the game for me. Uh, I, th I think the biggest thing is being underneath there and taking all my equipment off and keeping my regulator on and just sitting and basking in the surroundings that I know very few people get an opportunity to do completely changes my outlook of you know my day-to-day -day lifestyle and all I can think about is getting back on the water sweet um, now I know in our last um, dive we did mm -hmm. with Tyler the jet ski and I also had the sea -Doo scooter and you actually got a chance to use it what was your take on it um, I wanted to go faster <laughs> uh, it's got three different gears to it and I know you press it down to change the second release press again third and it just engages you forward and you can kind of control which way you're going um, it did make it a little difficult having the extra weight on my back. I think if I was underneath there with a smaller tank or maybe not a second person holding on to it because me and Andrew yeah. were both attached to it holding on that to it. That was fun time. <laughs> but I think if we had a, a lower depth in using it, it would have been a completely different experience. But first time ever getting to use a Sea God, Sisu? Sea Doo. Sea Doo. It, it, uh, the actual proper name is DPV. DPV. It's, um, dive Propulsion Unit Vehicle and there's actually a certification to go along with it to teach you how to use it safely. So while I was using it um, uncertified and uh, <laughs> under the but water. But you had cool. an instructor with yeah, you, so you did. Um, it was cool, I enjoyed yeah. it, it was a lot of fun. Um, the biggest thing coming up is I do have another student, he ain't here tonight, but uh, all of us will be going down to Vortex Springs. Um, we'll be filming, um, enjoying time down there. It's a big old campground. Um, just great time to interact with each other, tell our dive stories. Um, Tyler, um, the biggest thing with 
cleaning the river. I know we went and I took you all to 280 Bridge. Mm -hmm. The reason why I go out the, to certain areas is because people actually throw out weapons, mm -hmm. knives, and the, there's kids swimming in these waters every day. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing for me is to clean up these waterways so my sons can have them when they're older. Anybody want to put input? Yeah, so um, along with the picking up the trash and stuff like that that we do, um, there is that positive image also. Um, but like you mentioned, finding some of the things that's in the waterways, it's, it's crazy, man. You know what I mean? You can go into the water and find something that you would never expect. Uh, and we've, a warhead. We've been, we've been <laughs> yeah. witness to that, obviously. So, um, I mean, yeah. Which um, Tyler's been up around Atlanta a lot. Um, we definitely... Um, want to hit that spot again um yeah. i got a couple more dive trips planned out um matt's gonna come with us um we actually have to have access by boat to get to them they're um a little further out than a surface swim but we'll do it safely and uh get that footage to y'all um matt on the um certification side what is the most rewarding class you ever took hmm. or what are your certifications so far uh let's see i got open water advanced open water <clears throat> let's see i got rescue i got peak buoyancy uh i think that's it maybe one more enriched air enriched air yeah <laughs> that's it so um just to touch on um his certifications which you've been diving a year or so You're right at a year um first step is to get to a scuba shop or come see me my contact will be in the bottom of the screen um definitely um don't try this don't try this don't try this if you are not trained this no, is a no. a extreme sport but when we're doing it safely it doesn't seem extreme but you will and can be seriously injured doing this sport without the proper training. Um, let's touch on rescue. Um, so the first one was open water. Correct. Um, then we went to advance and right. you got a little bit deeper. So the way us instructors describe it is you're in a glass ball as an open water diver. Then your advance, your ball gets a little bit bigger. You're worried about the environment. Um, trash picking up stuff like that then you get into rescue and that's a big big step because now instead of just worrying about yourself you're actually being trained to actually provide care for others who are in an emergency um on the rescue class um without going to too much detail what how was the training oh uh, the training was great um, you, you first go in, you, you, you take the class pretty much like any other class. You start with paper, paperwork, you know, computer work, stuff like that. But then when you actually get out in the field and you get out in the water and you just learn how to actually find people that are under the water and how to, you know, bring them back and actually take care of them. That way they have a second chance to live. It's pretty amazing. So I like it a lot. Um, I uh, also am an instructor in rescue. Um, the biggest thing, and you know this, it's a serious class. Most definitely. Um, all of us instructors take rescue diver as the first step to becoming a professional diver. Um, which after rescue, you got dive master and then instructor, which I am. Um, and that's when you start learning the different areas of equipment, um, what not to do, the do's and don'ts. Um, actually teaching rescue and when i'm teaching rescue as you know i am very serious because that's someone's life most definitely yeah. um tyler when you ever been entangled or <coughs> anything in the river i've ever been entangled, entangled in something um yeah there's so whenever we dive i always have a knife on me just for protection purposes um, but yes, there have been a couple times where I've been tangled up in things like fishing lines, nets, and things like that. And um, just having that knife has really gotten me out of a lot of trouble. So as scuba divers, we're taught to have a cutting tool. We don't call them um, 
cutting knives, knives. Um, the biggest thing is any tool that could free you from an entanglement. And I'm sure when you got entangled, your heart started racing. Oh yeah. And through the training and everything that you gave me and as you were my uh, instructor, um, as or through that training, you know, you learn about how to stay calm during these situations and stuff like that. Um, but one of the craziest things is, is that a lot of times, like before I got into scuba diving, you know, you see people on TV doing it all the time and it seems so easy and it seems like it's, you know, perfected and safe and all these things. But through training, um, I'd say that just the training that I've had alone um, in our classes, it's really helped me, especially in situations to where, you know, there is an actual emergency situation and just knowing that staying calm can be the difference between staying alive you know what I mean yeah so um, I mean that's that's one of the hugest things to me and like we said earlier um, this is a extreme sport um, I mean Tyler's first-hand witness you can get entangled um, yes we have air supplied to us but it only lasts for so long so we need to calm ourselves down make sure we're calm figure out where we're tangled at for yourselves and then end of that. You guys have anything else you want to add? Um, be aware of your equipment. Know what you have on you and make sure it's all in tip top shape. I think the worst experience I had was actually one of my very first dives with Tyler. We went to Orlando and went to Rock Springs and they have this huge cave or cavern that goes 180 feet down. Now we only went maybe 40 or 50 feet down, but as I was down there, I started feeling really lightheaded I uh, saw the black spots in front of my eyes right before you passed out. I know out. exactly what you it had. Was first time ever feeling that below water. Yeah. <laughs> below water, I got it all day. Iron deficiency, sure. But, um, but below water, it was a different story. And apparently I had faulty air. The, the place I took it put in unfiltered or badly filtered air into the tank, which caused contaminated. me contaminated. Yeah. So uh, luckily I had Tyler who was more than experienced and who could help me out and kind of like calmed me down, walked me through it, gave me his regulator and then we worked our way up from the depth that we were at to safety and then switched out tanks, obviously put a new one on. So you actually brought up a great point. Um, as of all of us are scuba divers, um, I can't stress enough to research where you're getting your air tanks filled if you are a scuba diver. Absolutely. Because um, like you said, contaminated air, that could Never even kill thought you. about it. Never thought that was even an issue for me while I was in the water. Yeah. It, it definitely, um, and uh, also, um, at certain depths you get nitrogen narcosis depending on your uh, dive tables and stuff like that but um that's why we use the BRAF. um bruce willis ruins all films which i'll probably get yelled at for that but um bcd which we all do it um we check each other's bcd which is the pack that goes over the scuba tanks um making sure they ain't ripped um weights make sure we are all proper weighted because if you're overweighted, you're using more of your air to inflate your BCD, and you're struggling. Most of the dive, it ain't gonna be a good dive. Um, air, so that's where the air comes in all. Um, so what we do as a buddy check, as you guys know, I'm just explaining to the audience that we'll actually smell each other's air, because if it's contaminated, you'll know it right then. Um, and then we'll go on to releases, final okay, and then we're ready to die. I like it. Yep. I know the, the first thing that kind of got me into diving was uh, whenever I got invited to go to UCI. Yes. Okay, so UCI, it's an uh, investigator class. Uh, Adam was in that class. He's actually a graduate of it. Uh, the sheriff's department was there. Pretty cool times. Uh, I actually have a pontoon boat, so I got invited from a boat, but kind of fell in love with it. Uh, it. It's just amazing what you find down there, really. And I know they found a gun and a couple other things down there that day, a purse that was weighed down with a brick, stuff like that. So it's just, it's just crazy what they, what they find down there. So. And Tyler, that's what I was talking about. Um, I am a master underwater criminal investigator. Um, I'm actually trained on how to clear a bridge totally and fully. 99% uh, accurate. And that's what I was telling you about the jack stays, which um, we'll show that on our next dive down at um, Vortex. Are you guys excited? Heck yeah. Heck I, I got a condo. I've never been to Vortex. 
What? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Super it's beautiful. I love it. Dude. Hey, I got Clear the uh, Canvas. Really? Thank you. Oh, yeah. More than Orlando? The skis uh, down there? Or very similar? I'd say Vor- Vortex Springs compared to Orlando. Vortex, I mean, is is, is about as clear as it, you're going to find. Now, in Vortex. Yeah. It's Vortex not very is, big, but, I mean, it's, it have, it's kind of is amazing. Is it a live animal or is this man-made? Uh, no, 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 it's no. a natural it's got a cave spring. It's okay. system and everything, the, yeah. Because we saw man So, Vortex Springs, the cave system actually goes down 300 feet. Oh, and yeah, you I'm won't not, get. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, you shouldn't be even in the cavern. No, no, no. Um, but when we take our my buddy down and get him certified, I'm sure he'll fit right in. Um, we'll uh, be filming a lot. Um, I got the 360 camera now. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be filming with that. That'll probably be on my channel, and then Tyler and Matt will have their GoPros. Um, and Matt eventually. Yeah, yeah. Matt. I'm gonna get there. Right, yeah. gonna yeah. it's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> we'll bring the scooter. Um, I might bring. I have a metal a vibe detector. It's an underwater metal detector. We'll That's probably like. play around with that down at the um, San Andrews Park. Matt doesn't know how to read it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got it up. <laughs> I've seen enough videos. <laughs> but um, um, there's also Devil's Den that I want to visit. Too. Devil's Den. Yeah. Um, My mother went diving down there, and also the coral reef off of the Florida Keys, which is yes. another spot I was told. Beautiful. I know the coral reef's not in the greatest shape right now, but it's still a site for sore. Yes, reef, so. um, and like I said, I got many king in actions, and we could get a boat down there and head out. Um, actually, my buddy who was just down there lobstering, he uh, dropped his boat in Miami and left his car and went to the Keys. Nice. For a week, I wish. Goals. That's crazy. Yes. Goals. Yeah. Um, one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> but um, what I, what I like to talk about is some of the finds that we found. Yeah. I know, I, mean, yeah. I know Tyler. Um, I'll let him go into his details. Um, my list is nowhere near as extravagant as yours, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, I mean, I found everything from um, Apple watches. Um, I've never found a GoPro yet. I'm really hoping to get another one. Um, I found uh, regular glasses. Um, I found a full bicycle and uh, a, a really nice fishing pole, that uh, really heavy weighted one. Uh, what is it? this giant? The, it's like an ocean um, fishing pole. Yeah, like, like deep sea shark. rod. The only time I've ever seen it was like on Jaws when I was a yeah. kid. So I thought that was pretty cool. So those are some of the big finds that I've found. Um, so what are some of the big finds? You yeah, so um, through the past year of diving, I mean, there's been some pretty crazy <laughs> things, man, really. Um, <clears throat> I don't even know where to start. So. I've, I mean, I found things such as phones, Apple Watches, uh, some cameras. There's there's a bunch of little things like glasses and you know just the normal things, a bunch of fishing lures. But there are those hit days where you go out and you find something like a grenade, a warhead, and those are my two big, my two biggest proudest finds. And I mean, just the, I don't even know the how to express the feeling <laughs> so of seeing something like I that. I got a question. With the warhead you found, yeah. What what recently happened? Can you tell me the story about what just happened with that warhead? Okay, so, yeah, pretty wild story. So, um, whenever I found it, I, I have the video on my YouTube channel, and you can check it out if you would like, but um, whenever I had found the warhead, I didn't initially know what it was. I picked it up, and I was kind of brushing it off or whatever. Well, I ended up taking it out of the water. Still didn't know exactly what it was, but I knew it was a weapon of some sort. Um, and anytime you find a weapon, it's always cool, so I kind of let out a little scream of happiness whenever <laughs> I found it. So... Um, but anyways, we took it out of the water and then ended up taking it to the National Civil War Museum. Well, the curator up there actually told me that it was a warhead from the early 1900s. Um, and from there, I found, or learning that information, I realized what I had and I was like, okay, so I need to turn this in to somebody. How long did you so, have it for? Well, I had it for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? Uh, two weeks? <laughs> it was on my dining room table for two weeks. <laughs> so, um, other than that, I mean, we ended up turning it in after doing some research found out the police would be the best person or the best people to call to turn it into and then um ended up calling the police to turn it into them and it blew up into a huge scene all pun intended <laughs> <laughs> we ended up um turning it into the police officer and then the bomb squad ended up getting called the fire department came out and then the police bomb squad actually ended up saying that they didn't want to touch it they didn't want to mess with it then they set buckets so, of sand around it to yeah, protect it just in case yeah. it did explode and see it was so funny because whenever i had found it you know being at home and having this thing, I mean, we didn't take any type of special caution. It's <laughs> nope, not even a little bit. <laughs> no, I don't know how far I, was I should like, go into depth with this, but I was actually even it. at home, like, I, was, with, I had a chisel and a hammer, like, cleaning it off. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so it. serious. <laughs> while, while I'm on the couch playing video games, he's <laughs> yeah. cleaning a bomb. <laughs> but I didn't know what it was at this point. I'm surprised so. you didn't get put on like a terrace watching. Man, me. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. At least all of us, because we were all there. Man. So <laughs> it could have definitely went worse than it went, but. Um, the police, after they ended up putting the sand buckets and everything around it, they came to the conclusion that they didn't want to mess with it just because it was a military weapon. So they ended up calling Fort Benning Bomb Squad. They came out, defused the situation, pun intended again. And, uh, <laughs> they defused the situation, and everything turned out cool, man. It was it was a lot of fun. It was definitely an interesting experience and something I'll never forget, man, because it was, it was wild. It was very Thank God wild. we videotape everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every bit of it. I know crazy. you got an opportunity to be on um, three different news channels because of this. Yeah. You set up um, different yeah, so news channels, castings. Af yeah, mm -hmm. after I found the warhead, news got around a little bit, and or the, that news got out to the general population, and I ended up getting probably five news stations calling me to set up interviews for stuff like, or to set up an interview about yeah. it. And um, man, it, it was crazy because I'm, I'm still kind of, I'm, I'm still fairly new to this YouTube stuff. So, I mean, getting a call from a reporter saying that they want to do a story over something that you just found. I mean, it was, it's crazy. It's really insane. And, and just think people have been driving back and forth across that right. bridge every day. And people for swim there years. all the time. Years and yeah. years. No telling how long it's been down there. Right. Years and years and years. At any point it could have exploded, took out a column, knocked the whole yeah, bridge down. the whole bridge. And a guy with a scuba tank. Bus. Exactly. And it really would have because the police actually ended up telling me that if that thing would have detonated, then it could have uh, exploded through a radius of a couple blocks. That's so, crazy. I mean, it wasn't, it was a small size, but apparently it had some type of kick to it. Yeah. So. so, Columbus University, Whitewater Express, and Brasfield and Gorey, yeah. and WC Bradley would have all been yeah. <laughs> And maybe the tap. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, we can't lose the tap. No, not no. the tap. <laughs> <laughs> the hooch, maybe, not the tap. <laughs> so, um, our next dive is coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, definitely uh, stay in touch with us. Um, I know me and Tyler will post on both our YouTube channels. My YouTube channel is actually Scuba Life 360. Again, Matt is Dive and Seek, mm -hmm. and then Tyler is Tyler Smart. And my first video will be coming out this Friday. Sweet. Yes, I'm super excited. Make sure you subscribe. Yes. Check out all our videos. Um, we have a good time joking up, um, but the main thing we do is safety first. If I don't, me being the instructor of the group, if anything is unsafe, I'm gonna stop it. Yeah. Um, so at this time, I'm going to bring my son in. Come over here. America. Over here by Matt so the mic can pick you up. Oh. So my son here just turned 10. I'm coughing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're, uh, he's actually, uh, he doesn't know it yet, but his uh, scuba diving books are at the house. Uh -oh. Nice. There you go. Congratulations. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. So um, when I take um, our buddy Ryan, I'm actually going to be teaching my son, Carson, as well. What's your YouTube channel going to be? <laughs> you might as well go ahead and start thinking of it now. Yeah, you might as well start. <laughs> You're, You're already. <laughs> all the time. So get ready. I like it. So um, the actual age. Um, so Carson will actually be getting a junior open water. What that um, limits him to is 40 feet, which he can still dive with us. Yeah. Um, and he has to dive with a parent. Of course, me being his parent, he's going to be diving with me every time I go. <laughs> Maybe I don't want it. <laughs> but um, we'll take him down and we'll have footage of him and our buddy Ryan getting certified and post it to the YouTube channel. Also, we'll come back and hopefully do another show. Look forward to it. Awesome. Sounds good, man. All right. Good hang out with you guys again. Yep. I guess. Heck yeah. And join the movement, everybody. We are starting something that is super positive. Check out the YouTube channels. Watch the future episodes. You, sorry. No, you go ahead. And if you do have any scuba experience, certifications, anything like that, please link up with us. Yeah. We're yeah. trying to grow a community of scuba divers who want to go out, go on adventures, help clean up. I mean, if we have four people picking up trash, imagine having 10 people pick up trash. The area could be so much cleaner. We could find nicer things, cooler things. The kids will have better opportunity to dive and swim in it. I mean, the faster we grow it, the, the better off we'll be, in my opinion. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, definitely uh, check us out um, on YouTube and uh, we'll catch y'all next time.